Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nish Kumar Singh and you are watching ISTQB Foundation series. Finally, we are moving with uh, chapter 2 today. Uh, we are done with chapter 1. Hope you, have, you would have been through the tutorials there and uh, should you have any queries, uh, you are free to contact me for any such things to be asked at any point of time. Uh, we are in chapter 2 and the chapter 2 is about uh, testing throughout the software development lifecycle models and uh, let's understand what more we are going to understand in this chapter. So here we have got obviously the understanding on the development model first of all at what and how the testing happens in different methodologies and what are the different methodologies available, how testing can be implemented within that. How does it really vary from each other? The 2.2 will be about the test levels uh, to, that is like understanding on the component integration system and acceptance. Test types will add more value on what is white box, what is black box testing. Also to understand how the difference comes between functional and non-functional testing. Following that, we have a small topic to be covered that is maintenance testing, which has some new addition added compared to the previous syllabus. So in this tutorial, we'll be just studying, uh, understanding about the 2.1, that is software development models, and let's get started with it. So very first thing to understand here is obviously how the software development model more works and how testing should be practiced. So generally we have different methodologies and different types of testing being conducted under that. But uh, certainly ISTQB has something specific to convey that how or what basic characteristics must a good testing should have. So here with help of vModel we would try to understand the same thing that what characteristics are we talking about. So generally we have got four major good characteristics of testing and for that I would just put it across to you with help of vModel and then I'll summarize it all. So generally you know about vModel, uh, it is a sequential model and has uh, some relevant activities happening like business requirement. Uh, while the business requirement gets gathered, uh, there's a certain thing which we invite as the acceptance test team to come and join the uh, requirement gathering process and contribute in terms of finding the defects in the documentation at an early stage. And the same verified document that the business requirement may be used later at the acceptance testing phase. So we generally say that what if a defect is caused in acceptance testing and later we realize that it was due to some insufficient information, incomplete information, such omissions or ambiguities in the business requirement which were not checked at an early stage. And of course, sequential model invites a lot of effort required to be reworked on such defects. So we generally practice uh, stating that why don't we invite the acceptance test team to come early when we are gathering business requirements and let them let them contribute in terms of uh, helping us find out the loopholes uh, and uh, the key areas where we may lack to help uh, acceptance testing pass. Similarly, we have it for all other stages as well, like system requirements. Uh, when we gather, we invite the system test team to come and join hands, and that also helps them to do a system test plan. STP stands here for a system test plan at an early stage. Now, where generally the STP represents that the analysis and design of the uh, test activities of the respective level must begin during the corresponding testing activity. So that's where we say that it is coordination between the two stages. Similarly, for architectural design, we conduct integration test plan, which will help you to do integration testing later. And the detailed design would help you to do component test plan and also help you to do component testing at a later point of time. Anyways, the code comes at a junction and does not have any specific thing to be discussed at this point of time. Now, from this uh, model, what we understand is the four good characteristics of testing. One. For each development activity, there must be a corresponding testing activity. Of course, we are having analysis and design. The second one is the analysis and design for a respective level must begin during the test corresponding test level. Uh, for each level, we should have a specific objective and tester must be involved as early as possible. Let's quickly look at these points clearly mentioned here. So from the V model, we understood these four points and these are the several good characteristics of testing. 
For every development activity, there is a corresponding testing activity. Each test level has a test objective specific to that level. That means whatever level you conduct, it must be uniquely identified in terms of the objective and coverage. The analysis and design of tests for the given test level must begin during the corresponding development activity that I should not wait for this testing phase to come into picture, rather it should begin at an early phase uh, where the requirements or the design is being gathered. Uh, last, tester should be involved in reviewing the document as soon as the drafts are available. Now when you say drafts are available, it simply means that as early as possible, not even when the finalized document is available. As early as the first piece of document is created, you involve the testing team to come and contribute so that the requirement can be reworked and added value to it. Moreover, here are the list of the different methodologies we have and how exactly the uh, testing being conducted as a part of it. So sequential models, we know about it, like we saw an example of V-model that it is a sequential because uh, the previous stage gets completed, then we move to the next stage. So it doesn't have a rollback possibility. Once you complete a particular stage, then only you move to the next one. Incremental allows you to design, build, test in pieces, but uh, can grow in a small size. And of course, it goes in a smooth way where... Uh, you generally do not have uh, bigger things to be dealt with, so you have small chunks of softwares and uh, you move incrementally. Whereas when it comes to iterative model, of course, with each iteration, you add something extra to the same previous requirement. So every single iteration you run, you have the previous set of requirements and the new set of requirement included with that. So the testing becomes really hectic and more important, more complex to deal with. So we have more, uh, you know, cares and special measures to be taken at this point of time. Here are certain examples on rational unified process, like what iterative models we can have. RUP, you have Scrum, you have Kanban, you have Spiral, and these are the different examples of iterative where we generally talk about Agile as well. The same thing which contributes in that manner. Finally, here we have got a small topic on software development model in context that how the model can be utilized within the projects. Like how do you decide what are the factors, the key areas to be considered to decide on usage of automation models. So uh, the development models, I'm so sorry. So here if you see, I've got a list of uh, certain points here like software development lifecycle should be selected on terms of project and product characteristics. What is that project you're testing? What is the characteristic of the project? What is the you know application functionality? And sometimes it is also about the uh, the project characteristics that how it's going to be, whether the client wants uh, some frequent deliveries or we are not having a frozen set of requirements. So we will be given with uh, you know small piece of requirements now and then, or the requirements may change at certain point of time where the client requests that. So you, you consider these project characteristics and at the same time, you also consider the product characteristics like uh, the complexity involved, the platform being used, or the uh, factors like risk involved in that, or whether you have dealt with such applications before or not. So you have all these options. Where uh, to certain extent, to deal with any additional type of application or project characteristics may invite you to combine two or more models, and you call it as a hybrid model where you see that the client may be from uh, another domain or the requirements are not clear, then you may combine spiral with prototype or you do add you know, provisions to take care of such projects. So we just mean to say that you are open to include such things as a part of your process as well. Internet of Things, which have a different, uh, you know, system altogether, may have, you know, we are talking about IoT in today's era, and there are different things like devices, products, surfaces, and generally we deal with different types of methodology for them. So altogether, what we mean to say that, like for, you have challenges, you have options, you just take care of those considerations, what you need to take care of before you select the development model. So generally the primary aspect would be the project and product characteristics, 
based on that you select a model if you think there is another model required necessary to be added to it you combine them together to get the best benefits out of it anyways uh, that's all from this topic here team uh, thanks for watching the video if in case you are not subscribed to the channel please do subscribe as we are coming up with many other things in the flow so we will be having other chapters also continuing with this tutorial so stay tuned for that Anyways, till then, uh, if you have any query, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to assist you. You need any other information, I'm here all the time. So, thanks for watching the team. Uh, uh, happy learning.